Are we on? <laughs> it's like walk on yourself having a podcast. <laughs> And that's a wrap. We're done. <laughs> what the heck? Game over, Game over. man. We're uh, already sweating in here. Hadn't even been an hour yet. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to Self-Evident Podcast number 24. That's right. If you do the math, and we don't because we can't do math... <laughs> But uh, it's our, been four months. Our, <laughs> our guy Jonathan corrected us earlier. He told us it's six months of podcasting. Six months, yo. Massey had four months. I had twelve months. I don't know how I got that, but I'll tell you how we got that. We don't have time to think. Public There's a education lot of issues going on. Or, or Public education, yeah, that's issues. True. Uh, let's go you know, with issues. But it's funny because like I graduated, <laughs> I think with like a three four average from high school, and I'm thinking, you know, the public school system it probably doesn't mean much today. <laughs> <laughs> no diss on teachers, man. Y'all are doing your best, but you're, you're working hard. Whoo. But look at the material you're working man. with. It's it's kind of like a potter having to work with. Which I feel dirt. bad for teachers actually, because they're trying to do their job. Parents yeah. now it seems like they're just laying the responsibility of raising the kids on the teachers, yeah. right? And then you're just trying to you're just trying to teach. All of a sudden, you end up being parent slash teacher slash discipline, disciplinarian slash what uh, artist slash yeah. scientist slash. Bank idea maker slash, and, you know what I mean? So there's yeah. all these, and I feel bad for teachers. So keep praying for them teachers that you guys have, man, especially uh, in, in your area. You and know? go easy on them. Go yeah. easy on them because the the bulk of the work should be done at home. That's right. The teacher should be there to transfer the information, answer the questions, and guide the learning process. The teacher is not supposed to be there to shape the character of the human being. Said by a former teacher. Absolutely. Now... Which my, is true. My job ended up being shaping character of these human beings. Yeah, you were different. You, you know, had senior class. Yeah. They were basketball players. Some of them foreign stu- students. Yeah. Your, your, your was, yours was, I think, different. But Yeah, it was a different situation. But, <laughs> but, and you think about it, these kids are with the teachers eight hours a day, five days a week. Right. So no matter what, there's, there's a lot some more time character there. shaping going on. But really, the parents should be backing it up, not fighting with the teacher at every turn. 150%. I agree with you. Anyways, speaking of public education, public programs, public, 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 we wanted to get into socialism. Is that a curse word? It is to some. Uh, it, it's kind of become a popular term. It is. Thrown it's out growing. there. Um, what's, what's scary about that, that it's become a popular term knowing what socialism and communism have done to societies in the past. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it was just 70 years ago we fought a dictator. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and many dictators, actually. And if you think about it, the regimes from, like, you know, Iraq and all these things, we're, you know, we're fighting these things, but yet at the same time we're kind of, like, doing our own kind of regime over here where it's mm-hmm. like the politicians can just, like, make up what they want. We want to give away free stuff. Says who and how are you going to do it? Well, with taxes. Well, <laughs> where's your authority <laughs> for that? Always more taxes. There's always more. That, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, we're, we got to get into this, man, because this is a popular thing. And one of the things you, scary, you reminded me that I've thought about is we're very obsessed with Nazis right now and Hitler, and, and we don't want the Nazi regime coming back, mm. which, yes, we don't want the Nazi regime coming back. I understand that. But if you... just Just to be... Blunt, candid. candid about this. Nazi regime, ooh, what, six to eight million? Communism, through all kinds of different countries, death toll anywhere from 60 to 100 million, which we don't have exact figures on. But it, And you look at Nazism, Nazism or fascism really took root in Germany and Italy. Communism took root in a lot of countries in Africa. It took root in Asia, China, Russia, right? Um, China. um, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam. Like, it's in in Latin America 
has had a lot of socialism working its way through. And a lot of the African countries, one of the big reasons they fell apart, people always say colonialism. One of the big reasons they fell apart was because communism tried to get instituted and it just Hmm. dissipated. So when we're talking about dangers of things coming and taking root, it's kind of like we're trying to guard the front door against fascists and Hitler. And meanwhile, Stalin's coming in the back door. In a lot of ways, yes. And that's why we want to discuss socialism. I know it's a hot topic. I know everybody's talking about it, but we want to put our two cents in. And the biblical side of it. Exactly. And why God... So so think, think about this. All this really comes down to is man thinking he has authority over other men. Yeah. Kingdoms, socialism, Marxism, Leninism, dictatorships, all these things. It is man thinking he has authority over other men. When we preach the gospel of Christ, and, and, and you know, you're know you so authoritative, why are you bringing your morals to me? Don't put your morals on me. They're not my morals. My authority doesn't come from me. And I'm not looking to rule your life. I'm just telling you this. You're choosing the consequence of your life. Whereas in communism, socialism, yeah. Leninism, Marxism, all the other isms, dictatorships, democ- d- democracies, yes, democracies, um, what happens is y- others choose your fate for you. Like, out the womb, we're already taxed an insane amount of money. Out the womb, we know abortion is legal, which it's not. There's no constitutional law that says it's legal. Matter of fact, the Bill of Rights says it's not legal. I I want you to get more into that, because a lot of people say, well, Roe v. v. Wade made it legal. Can you you elaborate on that? Because Because I'm sure people have that question. Sure, because Article 3, Section 2 doesn't give the the Supreme Court the authority to make law, only opinions. When they had the opinion, it's kind of like, okay, but what now? They just derived an opinion. There was no legislation brought down. Even if they said the state couldn't do that, that doesn't give you the... Just because they said the state couldn't doesn't mean you could. No. You see what I mean? That's that's the problem is, is when people say that the Constitution is a living, breathing document. Well, see, the Constitution doesn't say we can't do this, so we're going to do it. No, it doesn't say it, so don't try it. You know what I mean? No. That's the, the, the parameters of law. Matter of fact, again, in Article 3, Section 2, only the Supreme Court can only weigh on matters arising under the Constitution of these United States. And the things that are protected are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Which then, And then that's why the argument gets so important about whether or not it's life. Which, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can answer the argument for you guys right away. It's a life. It is, because you have to terminate it, right? Exactly. You, you, you have to stop the right, process. Right. Which we're getting off track. I, but no, 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 no. You know. but, that's God. I mean, you know, that was the Supreme Court saying that it was can you Can you go into that? Dred Scott decision? Dred Scott. <sighs> My mind's drawing a blank. Not giving blacks like certain rights. And then for a long time, it was considered constitutional until it was struck down with Ford versus Ford v. Education. That's right. That's right. That's right. What was... Exactly. And what yeah. it comes down to, what yeah. it comes, yeah. what it, and see, all this is coming down to socialism, Supreme Courts, like he just said, the Dred Scott decision where it was once, uh, you know, constitutional not to allow gay, uh, blacks, you know, so, something. Like and then all of a sudden it gets yeah. reversed by the same Supreme Court later, you, later yeah. on down the road. Yeah. Why did they do that? By whose authority and what morality? Are you saying just because our society's changing? According to who? What's your standard, right? What's the standard that you're governing yourself by, first off, and that the nation's governing itself by? So if all of a sudden now the government becomes the moral arbiter, who's in charge of the moral arbitration of the government? The people whom we elect? Oh, like that guy that was, the, the, that was busted uh, with, with, with a, uh, you know, Monica? Like that? Yeah. Like the, the, the people who are taking you know, millions of dollars for speaking events, basically, accumulated? Uh, the, the people who push gay rights agendas and things like that? Where we want more power for the executive branch, when we have senators that are literally living behind closed doors doing things, ungodly things, right? Is that our moral authority? Is that who we want? And and it's we've given all that power over to the judiciary, where now they're the ones who are shaping the direction <laughs> of morality. You look at California, and you had Prop 8, which upheld traditional marriage. It passed in California, which blows my mind. Like... This passed in the state. The people spoke. The, the people spoke. And this state, which is always known as super liberal, it passed. And then it got overruled by a judge who said, well, this isn't constitutional, so therefore, goodbye. 
this this activism of of the judiciary, judiciary yeah we'll, who, we'll get it that's really you know become really let's strong, do that on the next know? podcast so ju- i would love to judicial because, activism and i promise we'll do it because how does one judge speak for the rest of the country yeah nine unelected officials speak for the rest of the country no no and the congress should be keeping them a check so should the president no yeah. wait where's where's your the, the thing that happened with gay marriage in 2015 the supreme court should have said we have no jurisdiction here. We're not the authors of marriage. We can't tell you what marriage is or isn't. And, and this, I think the decision was, we don't want to tell you what marriage is. Cool. That doesn't mean it's legal now. No. That doesn't mean that. You know what I mean? So and, and <clears throat> this isn't an attack on gay people, okay? I'm saying this. And, and a, a young, one of my young adults came up today. This is how socialism works. Now we're, we're fighting the government right now. See, we're turning on each other because the government is trying to get more involved in your life. The only reason we're fighting each other is because the government wants more power in your life. I see. That's socialism. That's, that's a good point. It, it, that's what's happening. They're fighting. So, so he said, so you don't think gay, you're not, you're not upset that gays are together. No, they're going to do what they want. It's their free it's, will. It's their free will. Listen, man, my duty as a preacher is to be there to preach to them, to love them, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that they might repent of their sin and become a child of God. That is my job, right? And preach the kingdom of heaven. That's my job, right? To dictate what their life is, though, is not my job. No. I can't do that, right? So he's like, well, what do you think of gay marriage? No, I don't think the federal government should have had their business. And he goes, wait, you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. Because that is not a jurisdiction of the government. It's just not who ordains marriage. God, that's the only place you'll find it in scripture, right? Now, if we want to give that authority to the states, fine. But when does the federal government have the authority to rule on individual lives? That is not their job. The federal government was way over the states. But even then, only constitutionally. I, and I think that's something that people forget because we've become so ingrained with this idea of the federal government in individual we've lives. Babies, we bro. We really have. But we've... We, we've erased the line between the federal government and the state government. Right. Because it was supposed to be a very loose federation of 10. states. Right. They were supposed to be their own independent governments. They have their that, own independent the, governments. Yeah. And that's exactly why they were set up that way because the federal government was only supposed to tie them together with the loosest bonds. Right. It was just supposed to be there to make sure that they all kind of work together to further the country's goals, right? Protect them, right? This this loose federation. What it's become now is really that socialist idea of an all-encompassing planning government. And a lot of people find that appealing because they see it as something that could take care of them. And we got into that on yep. Tuesday night with the devoted in talking about who's your God now? Is your God the government who you trust and have faith in to take care of you? Or is your trust and faith in God? Dude, this is so crazy. So they say, well, the federal government has the money. Where do they get it from? The people. Right? But where do the people get it from? Where do they derive their strength from? God. So really, who does the federal government get their money from? (laughs) Enough said. Yeah. If you didn't have breath in your nostrils that God gave you, you wouldn't even have the ability to have the money that you have as a federal government. The federal government isn't living, breathing. It's the people that comprise the government, right? Yeah. Now, here's the problem. We elect people now because one guy, uh, one of the young adults came up to me and he said, oh, it was you, Senator Sanders. I like his character. Remember you said that to me earlier today? Uh, what your friend said, I like Senator Sanders. I like his... Yeah, a family member told me that. Yeah, a family member said to him, well, I, I, like, I like his demeanor, his character. His, he's genuine. He seems he's kind this. and genuine. And so yeah. Jonathan asked him. So, but his issues, policies. Policies, policies. What are they? Had no clue. We elect. We want to elect him because he's a nice guy. What has he sat and had dinner in your table? You know what I mean? Like, have you it's, sat down and had a conversation with him? It's yeah. It's become cult of personality. It really has. I mean, a lot of people said they they wanted to vote for Hillary because she was a woman. A lot of people said they wanted to vote for Barack Obama, Obama, President, President Obama. Obama, because he was black. A lot of people wanted to vote for President Trump because he stuck it to that's the other exact, guy. It's a cult of person. That's right. It's a cult of personality, and and we've gotten it. We've talked about this. Obviously, we've gotten away from principle. What's the value or the principle that's being put forth? Exactly. So you know. to dive into socialism for a yeah. second, because you can explain. I mean. 
you're you're let me explain why I have Mike explain a lot of this stuff. I'm very preachy oriented. I'm very cut and dry and and I read into things, but Mike's very philosophical. So I love having his perspective on the show because it just brings kind of a roundedness and and, and there's there's a lot of meat and and substance to what he says. And so like explain socialism. So what you've got is you've got something so, that so don't you know. <laughs> that's that's Sorry. for all our northern friends out there. So, yeah. The Canada Bob fans. Wave Minnesota, Wisconsin, yeah, yeah, North Michigan, Dakota, f- Michigan. From all the beneath all the snow. Iowa a little bit. Yeah. A little bit Canada. North Dakota. North Dakota. Oh man. Hey man. Memories. J- j- just throw this out there. SoundCloud. We've been in like how many countries? Twenty seven? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Anyways, go ahead. Which a lot of them probably have no clue what yeah. the whole Canada <laughs> thing <laughs> is about. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I like it. Uh, Who's so the chubby kid? <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Why'd you call me chubby? All right, socialism. What? So, so, so. Let's All get right, back so to this. So, socialism. So, what, so is, what is socialism? Basically. The foundation that seems to tie socialism together is the argument over private property. Mm. You've got this discussion of whether or not private property should be in the hands of the individual or if to some extent or complete extent, the government should be in control. And I've noticed in America, there seems to be two spheres of socialism going on right now there's the we want expanded programs and we want some industries to be nationalized because we think that'll help the industry like healthcare, right that's the big one where we look at the nordic countries we go oh they're all socialist they've got nationalized health care a lot of the world has nationalized health care therefore we should too right so there's there's that side where i don't think those people philosophically are are against private property. But then you have the other side, which is really growing. And and I don't care what anybody says. Cortez is a a proponent of this. She's a big proponent of this because she's a member of the Democratic Socialists of America. And this is one of their tenets, is the removal of private property from the individual's hands. It should be in the hands of the government. That's their idea. And if you don't believe us, we'll, we'll get into the new Green Deal. Yeah. How you want to take over houses, basically saying you need to change to this. Yep. Even if we don't change, how are you gonna how are you gonna enforce it by force? By force. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So is it really voluntary, and you really want to do benevolence <laughs> for me, or is it force? <laughs> and that's it's and it's going. it's this Sorry. idea of this idea of central planning. And that you look at it, it's one step away from communism because communism that whole idea was. Government should be in control of all of it, and you look including at, religion. Yeah, incru- including religion. Like government should be involved in every aspect of the life because the government is going to be the one to make it the best for the collective. And there's a big difference between socialists and individualists in individual versus collective. So we're we're constitutionalists. We're Lockean guys through and through. We believe in the individual's rights. The individual is... And folks, we're talking about individual freedom, rights, yeah. liberty. As scary as it sounds, I'm talking about liberty for all. Yes, that means things we may not agree with as Christians. And the reason is because the federal government is not to restrict people from doing wrong. It is only to punish what they're doing wrong. You and I are the arbiters in society of what right and wrong is. Exactly. So does it sound scary? Of course. But guys, if, if we can't trust the Spirit of God to change a nation, we're believing the wrong God. Mm-hmm. Honestly, go ahead. Amen. And so we we believe in the personal responsibility of the individual. Mm-hmm. Socialists, communists, everybody on that collectivist side, they don't believe in the importance of the individual. They believe in the good of the collective. So they'll sacrifice the individual for the collective. And they believe that brings about the best good. What we believe is when the best good comes to the surface for the individual... It will help the collective. So, It'll help the society. So on that line, so the and I already know, but I'm asking yeah, for them. Yeah. I'm going to ask a couple devil's advocate type Absolutely. questions. So you're saying the federal government, right, wants ownership in a socialistic society, you know, pure socialism, democratic, because eventually democratic socialism will lead it, to it's socialism. It's want, they, government yeah. wants power. Yeah. It wants power. It's socialism. And it's not going to give it up. So it's just going to want power. So they want control basically of the individual. Yeah. They want a collective thing. 
Here's my question to all of you who are on the liberal side who want individuality. How's that going to work? That's a really fascinating question, and I've really wondered that. Is the whole thing falls apart because you you champion the individual, yet feminism you, you throw them you all free. into groups. You throw them all into groups. Are you black? Are you a woman? Oof. Are you gay? Are you straight? Trans? Are you, you trans? It's it's all these groups. So in trying to uphold the individual, individual, you're cutting the individual down because you're saying no, you need to be a part of a group. And it really goes back to that philosophy of individual versus collective. That's right. They don't see it in individuals; no they way. see collectives. Absolutely. Just how small can you get the collective group? And you have to have a title for each group. We're looking at going, no, we believe in the person. That's right. And that's why, like, Frederick Douglass is so important because Frederick Douglass is able to buck all of those narratives. labels, the narratives. False narratives, yeah. yeah. Because nobody can say, oh, well, he's a rich white male who owns slaves. <laughs> you can't do that. On the with contrary, him. he was a On black man contrary. who was a slave and he escaped was the complete plantation. Opposite. Like, if you're looking at the victim scale, he's at the bottom of the victim scale. Yeah. Yet he still says, no, the individual is the important part. That's right. That's the most important component. Once you get the individual right, then the collective benefits. Right. To add, so, so, so let's go with this point for a minute. This is why we are a republic. Let's just go with the scriptures for a minute. God created you in his image individually. We individually have different ideas, uh, who, but rooted in the same principles as Christians. Nope. We have different uh, gift sets rooted in the same principles. We have different giftings rooted in the same principles. We have different visions rooted in the same principles, right? We don't claim any independence outside of God because we're his kids, right? But the independence is in that claiming, right? So the independence is in there because he's given me freedom, right? God created you as an individual person with your own personality, your own thought process and all these things. All God wants from you is, number one, a union with you so that he can put his morality in you so that your giftings flourish. What happens is when you don't do that, they'll flourish in the natural for some of them, right? But that's all it's going to be. There's no legacy, really. All you'll be remembered by is by people who basically you left money to or you bought things for. That's how you're remembered. In the Christian walk, there's a book of remembrance written of you. And people will see your faith, and they want to continue because of the faith that you had, not because of the money you made, not because of the houses you had, all that stuff. They care about your faith. They care about you as a soul, and they know that you're going to live in eternity. So the cool thing about God is he creates us as individuals, right, first. Second, in Genesis, when he created Adam, he gave him dominion over all things Mm -hmm. to subdue it and have dominion over it, right? So he gave the, the individual property. Ooh, that's good. He That's gave good. Adam property, and he said, I want you to subdue it, which means to possess it, and to have dominion over it, which means you have it's your domain. How are you going to tend it? What yeah. are you going to do with it? Personal responsibility, which again is something that is not taught in the socialistic doctrine, right? Mm-hmm. So when he has a wife, and they sin, and they go off and do their thing, first thing he tells Adam is, or first thing he tells Adam is, he doesn't tell him, hey, get married, have some kids, buy a house. With the sweat of your brow, work. Teaches us right away what the order of this is. Work, right? So you can provide for that in your family because you're supposed to subdue and have dominion. Excuse me. Then he tells the woman, basically childbearing and all these other things, but she will support the man. If you read Proverbs 31, what a virtuous woman is, she's industrious. Mm-hmm. She, buy, she she saves up to buy the field. I mean, she's she her price is far above rubies. She's a keeper at home, but also as a, as a bulwark to her, her, her husband. So there's, there's this beautiful picture of what a woman should be. And guys, look at Esther and Ruth and uh, a lot of the New Testament uh, 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 women prophets and all these things. No. There is a lot of women who... So God creates us all as individuals... To have dominion. That is our job, right? Let me say this. Did you guys know that we have this thing called the Ten Commandments? If you're an atheist watching this, there's two specific commandments that God gave that destroys a socialistic argument. One, thou shalt not steal. You can't steal from me. But we're not. We're a federal government. You pay taxes. Really, you're not stealing from me? What happens when I don't pay for them? You force me. To do it. That is thievery. I don't care how you slice it, dice it, boil it, fry it, cook it, stew it. It is stealing from you. You know what you want to know why? If we you and I were both in a in a dark alleyway and I took your wallet, I I, I point a gun to your head and say, I want your wallet, and you say no and I shoot you. 
That's thievery, isn't it? Yeah. It's the same thing, right? That's what happens today. Also, commandment number 10, thou shalt not covet. You're not supposed to desire something that is not yours because it's someone else's property. You should be content in all things, the Bible says, right? That destroys the socialistic argument. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the, especially the covet part, um, when we get this discussion about billionaires and we get this discussion about the rich and, and they need to pay their fair share and they need to, they, they need to get in line and they should, it's immoral for them to be this rich, all of that argument, right? It boils down to really coveting what they have, because if you didn't covet what they had, you'd look at them and go, well, they've got it, whatever. But that's not what it is. It's they have it. They should be sharing it. Right, right. That's that's literally five-year-olds in a kindergarten classroom and one five-year-old looking at the two cookies that a kid has and goes, you need to share that. Share that with me because you have two and I don't have any. And then the teacher coming in because the kid yells at the teacher, hey, he won't share with me. So the teacher takes the cookie. Right. And gives it to and the kid. And gives it to the kid. So do you see how America now, we've be, kind of become babies. We go run to the federal government instead of dealing with our own problems ourselves. Yeah. We'll go run to a big old government because they'll force you to do what I want you to do. Right? Ooh. They'll force you to do what I want you to do. That's good. Folks, that is called tyranny. Tyranny by a man. Tyranny by democracy, actually. Yeah. Which leads to death. Suicide. Uh, John Adams said it. There's never a democracy that hasn't yet... Uh, committed suicide. Guys, if you remember the 12 tribes of Israel, right, when Joshua took them into the promised land, they inherited pieces of land for each tribe. Noah had his own land. Abraham had his own lands yeah. and his own wells. And, and, you know, Joseph, they had those things. Isaac, had they had their own lands, their own fields, they had their own cattle. Nobody could take it from them. There was no government coming against them saying, you need to do this now. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah, the Hebrew and, Republic. And there was, there was nothing in the Bible that said, you need to all share this with each other. Now, the Levites, the tribe of the Levites, they were the priestly class. God did say, your tenth goes to my temple, which then pays... The, the Levites. But the reason for that was because their whole job, their whole life was dedicated to being the priest for God. Right. So look, God's telling them, look, you need to respect and revere these people who are spending their entire life serving me. Right. You need to take care of them. That's different from everybody put your stuff in the pot and then we'll divvy it out evenly. God never did that. Right. And you know what happened was when the people asked for a king, what did God say? He's going to take your men for my armies. He's going to take your, or daughters your, your for sons for my armies, your daughters for my courts, your, your bakers, yep. you know, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your horses, your stuff. Yeah. He'll take your horses. He'll take all these things for war. Isn't that happening now? If we give over to this kind of a system, they will take over, and they have. You know, now you know, it's funny. Back in the day, they used to volunteer for the army because they loved America. Now it's like GI bills, no. all these things that we can pay for. And I'm not saying every kid goes in for that. Okay, don't misunderstand me. Because my brother was in the military, and we highly, highly support our military and our veterans. We do what we can uh, for them because we believe our military is the bomb. Mm. But if you look at the federal government, dude, we're getting into needless wars, useless wars in a lot of ways, and we want our troops to come home and be with their families, man. You know what I mean? And protect our country. But if you think about it, <clears throat> if God gives us all things freely, the Bible says, Jesus said the Pontius Pilate didn't even have an authority except for what his father gave him. Yeah. Well, Christ's father gave Pilate. That's the authority he gave him. You know what I mean? People say, well, Jesus never talked like this because he didn't have to. He wasn't, his job wasn't to confront a government. Some of us are. Some of us are yeah. called to that. If you don't believe me, look at John the Baptist. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't believe me, look at uh, uh, Paul. You know, confronting kings and nations. Look at Samuel. Look at the prophets. Nathan. These guys were heads. of. Look at some of the prophets like Micaiah confronting Jehoshaphat. Some people are ordained to get into these political places and redeem the king from a disservice or uh, breaking the law and those kind of things. So in this era of the republic, right? And, you know, it's funny. Uh, one, of my, one of the young adults, we were driving up for the send on Saturday. No. Cool event. And uh, <clears throat> he asked me, he said, so is there any hope for the democracy? And I'm like, no, because we don't have a democracy. We have a republic. Yeah. But we keep saying this democracy thing because 
It's we the people. No, no, no. It's we the people under law, under God. See, that's the difference, is in this republic, we already built a standard on who we were building it on already. Mm -hmm. So our law didn't come from just Locke. It didn't come from Jefferson and all these other things. It didn't come from just history books. It came from the one, and Locke even said, those things come from God, life, liberty, and property. They come from God. Okay, so what God is he talking about? He's obviously talking about the God of the Bible because that's what they referenced at that time. So did William Blackstone, right? All these guys and philosophers, I'm, I'm making a point here. If they reference that God, does he have a standard in order that our rights are are, are to be secured? Of course he does. It's called scripture, revealed law. There's municipal law, civil law, and revealed law. Revealed law being the Bible. That's what they depended on. And guys, you can look this up. I'm not making this up, right? There's three points in the Declaration of Independence. There's a God, right? Uh, our rights come from him and the purpose of government is to secure our God-given rights. Look at the second paragraph of, of the declaration. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created. There is a God. Equal. And they're endowed by this creator with certain inalienable rights. Our rights come from him. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. The only purpose of government is to secure our God-given rights. That's it. You can't call it a government anymore if it's becoming tyrannical. It's mm-hmm. Now it's called a dictatorship. And, and where we're getting into the socialism train is people are confusing what is a right so Ooh, now 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 we've got this idea that everything is a right a cell phone's a right i have a right to a cell phone i have a right to an air conditioning unit in my apartment sure I have, you do i have a right get to it. to all this stuff the difference is and that that's what needs to be said is the difference is you have a right to pursue those things you have the right to have access to them but people think that money is the access. So if I'm poor, their argument is I don't have access to this. Therefore, you need to provide this for me so that I have access. Yeah, it's called yeah. a job. So here, let me let me say this. A right is something that is given to you inherently by God, by the creator, right? It's given to you. It's not something that is taken from someone else to give to you. It's something within the natural course of life. Right. So you have. Look at the Bill of Rights. Our founders are very succinct in how they wrote that. We have the right to free speech. We have the right to the free press. We have a right to worship God, not freedom of worship, to worship God in our conscience. That's the first, the the, the first one covered. Right to petition our government. Right to <laughs> right to a fair and speedy trial. Uh, right to unreasonable searches and seizures. Right to stop it. Notice all those rights require no funding exactly they're none of them are handed exactly they're inerrant it's it's inaction that allows those to happen you know what i mean it's inaction by the government so freedom of speech with freedom of speech the government doesn't have to do anything they don't have to commit that, any right. action right and that's i think that's the barometer that we need to really and we Hammer. as in this country in us conservatives, us Frederick D- Douglass Republicans, like we need to hammer this idea of no, it's inaction that provides the right. That's right. Whereas right to health care, well, now we're getting into action, which now is tyranny. Th- that's tyranny because <clears throat> that's an action committed on or against somebody for somebody else. That's right. That's right. So let's let's go back to that. If you need health care, the government doesn't need to be involved in that because that's what he gave the authority to the church to do was to take care of the sick and the fatherless and the poor and the widow and to keep himself in spotted from the world. That is the duty of the Christian, not the duty of the government. Notice no action was given to a federal government by any one of God's decrees. When, when did you see that David was supposed to take care of the poor? Hmm. I never read it or saw. He may have done it. Yeah, but there was no direct commandment there was from God. never a commandment to right. them. Right. There's to no do that. commandment, even the Ten Commandments, to man. Doesn't say anything about he gives that love to you, especially in the New Testament, when it talks about benevolence. But he was kind hearted to you. God gave the manna from heaven. It wasn't Moses that gave it to him, it was God that gave it to him. Oh, that's good. Right? So God gives us all things to enjoy, right? Oh, it was cruel that they were walking through the wilderness. No, they could have made it in 11 or 12 days, but they decided to take 40. Exactly. Again, I say this to my kids all the time. I'm not the bad guy. You're choosing the consequence, and we're putting this on God. That's why we want a socialistic country, because we're too busy to wait for God. We're too in a rush to wait for God. We need to do it now, because I need to have what I want. 
That's yes. And, I need to have what I want now. And it it and I don't care it what it costs me to get it. It alleviates responsibility. We are getting into the territory of I don't res- want responsibility over my neighbor because there's there's this this level of Ooh, say disconnect. that again. I don't want responsibility over my neighbor. That's good. Right? That's that's a great because way to put it. Because if my neighbor is going through um, medical issues, right? And I, I've got a close friend who's going through medical issues, which I, I need to talk to you about later. But I can, I've got two choices. I can either say, okay, what do they need and how can I provide it? Right. Or... There should be a government program to help him out. So I don't have so to. So do I don't have to. Isn't because that crazy? It's, it's so much more comfortable for me to say, oh, well, extra money gets pulled out of my paycheck to take care of him, as opposed to, I've got to go to his house. I've got to provide some money. I've got to pray with him. I've got to sit with him. I've got to keep up on him. We are so into this idea of, well, the more the government can handle, the less I That's have to so do. That's so right, dude. Right? You'll have faith in man in a federal government to take your money to provide for other people, but you won't have faith in the living God that gives you the strength to pray to him to give them that thing. Exactly. Shame on me, man, because I've done it. This is reproving mm-hmm. me. I'm not even pointing fingers here. I hope y'all are hearing this because this is reproving me now, right? I would trust more a man with what God gave me than trust God himself with what he's given me? How dangerous is that? Yeah, I won't hear do. the Holy Spirit to tell me what to do to help another, but I'll trust a government program. That's how foolish I was. I'll trust a government program to take care of what God told me to take care of. Because you know what? I won't see results right away with God, maybe. That's the scary part. Because you don't yeah. get your prayers answered. That's not God's fault. Right? We weren't patient enough to wait for God. When he says, be still and know that I am God. Wait upon the Lord, the Bible says. Serve him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. With no guarantees. You know what? We are so privileged to serve God that even if he never answered our prayers, he's still worthy to be served. Mm -hmm. But I love him anyway. And you know what? He's been faithful to answer my prayers anyway. He's been faithful to me when I haven't been faithful. He's still seen me through every single trial that I've been through, even though I wasn't faithful to him all the time. And God's been so gracious to me to help other people. And now I've seen the fruit of that in my own life. And I've reaped that, right? Yeah. Shame on me for doing that before. Trusting a government with what God gave me more than trusting God himself with what he's given me. Yeah. You know, there's a point. There was one time. Nobody's going to believe this. And I don't care if you do or not. I remember all we had in our in our in our pockets were fifty dollars cash. I'll never forget this dude. And one of the guys that comes to church here, Louis Arsenal, he's got he does missions in Africa. They were doing a fundraiser on a Wednesday night for for we we're taking up a collection for him. And I looked at Carrie. I said, "How much money we have? She was, "Oh, we got that fifty. I grabbed the fifty and threw it. I just felt God tell me give it all. God's so awesome, man. The next morning, someone said, "I I felt like I was supposed to give you a thousand dollars, dude. I, sh- I felt something last night. We, we were supposed to give you money." To your ministry. You can't tell me God ain't real, man. You can't tell me God. Dude, I can tell you story. You know. You know. You've been there with me. I can tell you story after story. We would go out to do events with no money, no guaranteed money, and God would somehow come through with someone writing us a $1,000 check or a $500 check because they were so moved by the message and the Spirit of God. If we would trust Him with it. Yeah. Not trust ourselves. The reason that we're in this democratic, socialistic thing anyways, the reason why there's so much health care needed, the reason that there's so much uh, uh, mental health care needed is because we won't trust in the living God for him to deliver us from our sin and to deliver us from unrighteousness and demonic oppression. That is the only reason we have this going on, because we won't trust him. And he wants to set us free because he loves you. He loves you so much, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're, you can't do anything to remove his love. You may reject it, but it's always there. Until Judgment Day, which you chose. You chose that path, not him. It's the same Dude. thing with my kids, man. He did it to me this morning, my middle kid. He, he didn't do his homework. Sorry, buddy, no screen time Friday. Oh, he got all mad at me. I'm like, buddy... I'm not the bad guy. You know. It was your choice. You know you're supposed to do your homework after okay. school. You're, you're getting mad at me for what you did. <laughs> isn't, about, that, isn't that funny how but, we do that? Right. But how, how about yeah. not even getting mad? Dang it. Okay. I'm going to learn next time. 
I'm going to learn next time. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remember. No. It's not a shame thing. It's a, it's an honor. It's an it's a it's a integrity thing. It's a character thing. He needs to do that on his own without me being there for him. Because he's getting older. 10 more years that kid's going to college or whatever he he decides to do with his life. Hope he's like Jonathan where it's like he gets out, he wants to do business. Praise God. Something like that. If we don't teach our children to do that, they will end up in a social... This, this is why we have social... Because we won't train our children the way they should go. Yeah. I promise you that. It's because we didn't train them to trust the living God with their prayer life. Yeah. I can promise that. Because yeah. that's the fruit of it. That's and, the fruit of it. And we've... We're twisting scripture, not us, but as a society, we're starting to twist scripture to support this narrative. Um, Pelosi, not too long ago, was trying to use the goats and the sheep, uh, the the separation. And, you know, those on my right are the ones who fed the poor and visited me in prison. And, and yeah, those, not a government. Exactly. And that's she tried to use that as an argument that we should all vote for these policies because these policies then are taking care of the poor. Therefore you're a good person because you voted for that policy, which is not at all what that scripture was talking about. That scripture was talking about, no, you yourself have taken that step to take care of the poor, to take care of those in prison, to, to visit the needy and the sick. That's right. You know? I have a question, man. Why is not like Nancy Pelosi and AOC and all these Democrats? How come they never debate a true Christian libertarian? How come you've never seen that televised? And the, the uh, how many uh, CNN, all these cats will just let them spew their stuff. Oh, yeah. But they've I mean, never they've, debated Ben Shapiro face to face. They've never debated uh, uh, Stephen Crowder face to face. That's true. You know what I mean? Which I, I know Shapiro put up an offer to debate to AOC. AOC. Right. You saw Chank yeah. from from uh, the Young Turks debate Shapiro. Yeah. And he brought up his points. Some of them were valid, but they weren't constitutional. Your valid, your, your points. See, like uh, what what is it? Uh, uh, socialistic. Uh, uh, Economic policies. That's a real economic system. Keynesian yeah. economics, those are yeah. real economics. So you can have points about Keynesian economics. It doesn't work in a free market system, dog. It's just And that's the, and we're going to we're going to have to get into the realm. We as a, a collective, a, a general we, are going to have to get into the... Collective. Oh, no, it's dangerous. It's a curse. Um, we're going to have to get into that realm of why do we believe that the Constitution is the the premium government system, a constitutional republic? Because people can make arguments for a more mixed economy, a more mixed system, you know, and, and not that there aren't arguments to refute that, but we're going to come down to that where, and we already are, you look at the healthcare argument, Across the world, there's a lot of countries that have universal universal health care. Now, there are certain indicators and factors and variables that, that really get into the depth of that, of why it's, it's not as beautiful as it looks on the surface. But people are using that as those are better systems than the system we have. And we need to be ready to say why we believe our system is the best system. Not just, it's a given that a constitutional republic is the best system. Now, unfortunately, we've got to get into, this is why it's the best system. Amen. You know? Amen. And which is which is a, a, a big topic. Huge Because I believe, I believe yeah. in the constitutional republic, the free market works best. Where What is the free market? It's an individual system really based on God. And here's why I say that. It gives you the individual freedom... Of a, of a mutual transaction between two, two agreeing parties, and both leave happy. That's the fruits yeah. of the Spirit. But if a federal government gets in there, or some kind of dictatorship gets in there, mulls up the transaction and says, well, uh, even if you don't want it, you're going to have to buy it, who's happy? Who's happy? Because now you have a gun at your head exactly. telling you there's you no have fruit of the to spirit do this. There. Yeah. That, that's why I never understood with like preachers, if there's no fruit of the Spirit there, is it really godly? Is there love, joy, peace, uh, you know, loving kindness? Are those in there at all? Or a prophet? Do your words, are your words delivered in love, joy, peace, encouragement, kindness, love? All this, is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Same thing with a government. We got to hold them to the same standard, dude. Romans 13 says they're, they're ministers of God to thee for good. Ministers. That's what Romans 13 says. We have to hold them to that standard. Are they practicing these virtues? And if they're not, there's something wrong. 
Yeah. There's something wrong. If they don't possess those things, they, they, you just said they, it's it's all, it's all about uh, what what'd you call it, um, like character, not character, but uh, uh, how, how would you say? I'm it? missing. No, you know remember. how like Trump was elected because he was like a snot, oh, snot uh, nose, hit him in the face. Uh, principle, uh, yeah, character, what, value. You you yeah. said something. It was the the word. I forget what it, what it is. Uh, electing Senator Sanders because. Of his willingness to give oh, cult of personality. Cult of personality. There, there you, go. you go. Yeah, that's what's so different between that and actual morality. Because cult of personality is a facade. It's a facade. Ooh, that's good. Right. What's really the person's belief system? So you can easily, I could easily get on here and say all these things, but I am willing to say it in front of President uh, Obama and Trump and Bush and all these things. I am willing to go in front of Congress and say these things, and I have said it to some of my congressmen friends and no. things like that. I don't mind going to the mayor and saying, hey, look, we have an issue here. I wouldn't go in there brash and rude. Of course, I would go in there with love and kindness and just say, hey, man, we got an issue here constitutionally. What's going on? I, I'm the same person, God willing, here as I am anywhere else. I'm, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. No. Uh, when, when, when I go out and preach, I preach on these same things. This is, the message doesn't change. You know, you know what I love about the message of the Lord? It doesn't change. Socialism this this uh, democracy has been changing over time. There's no sur sure footing. Why do you think there's so much confusion out there? God is undeniable and he's irrefutable. His word is irrefutable. It's pure and it's clean. It endures forever, the Bible says. That's what I love about God. He don't change. You may not like it. I'll tell you, there's some days I look at some of the commandments. I'm like, I don't want to obey that. I want to hate that person. But your spirit tells me no. Your spirit guides me to the truth and light and love. Right. There's there, there's of course there's days I look at God and I see, man, that's that's a harsh commandment, Lord. I don't really want to obey that one today, but it doesn't matter what my feelings are. It matters the principle. And you know what? You know what's so cool? Every time that I get that obedience in my heart to obey him, there's there's always this outpouring of love that he, he, he pours over me. And there's times when I fail and I ask him for forgiveness most every time. And there's this outpouring of love. It's like, man, you're, yeah. you're getting it. You're understanding. You're moving forward. God doesn't change. I love that about my God because I can bank on him. It's like when you have a home that you've had in your family for 40 years and you come home for Christmas, there's just something about being home. There's something about being with your family. There's, it's solid. There's no, it doesn't matter what's going on out here. It's solid to be with your family. Same thing with God. No. But in a government where it's constant confusion and there's always things changing, one side says this, one side says that, one side says they're right, one side says that, you know, who's right? God, the one who never changes, you know? I think if if you were talking about the free market and... and Man, you got to get know. me on track. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Back to the free markets. So, well, you, you went that direction because sure. you understood... It's the, the character and the morals that uphold or crash the system, right? With the free market, there's a self-check. I mean, if you want to get secular and you, you want to remove God completely from the equation, there's still self-preservation that's allowed in a free market. Explain it. So in freedom of association, you and I can choose whether or not to have a contract. Mm. But we both have to... Pr we both are... An agreement. Trying to make sure to protect ourselves that we both come out ahead somehow. Happy. Happy, right? So we both have... there. There's... You have skin in the game. I have skin in the game. We both want to win on this, but in order for us to associate, we both have to come to an agreement, right? Right. right. Socialism does away with that competition aspect. There's a lot of people coming out saying competition's bad. It's awful it, because somebody loses. I'm sorry, but that somebody needs to get better or they need to get in league in association with somebody else who is better. The consumer wins, right? If the problem with having nationalized industries is you can't go anywhere else. Government's the only game in town. Yeah. And whatever prices they set, they set. Why do you they think, set. why do you think people are going to Mexico for cheaper alternatives for health? Because government sets the price. That's exactly right. Because they'll subsidize. People are like the yeah. government doesn't set the price of dentists. No, nah, but they're subsidizing. They subsidize healthcare, man. And you know what? <laughs> they subsidize college. I could set any price I want. I know the government's going to take care of it. Exactly. So then we go to Mexico. My my dad got some teeth work done. I would. I, I know by what they told me about my teeth, these chompers, <laughs> and eight thousand dollars to make them straight. I know it would have cost him at least that. No. He went down to Mexico for four hundred dollars. Fixed them. 
Four hundred bucks. No, because it's supply and demand, dude. He, so even if the guy would have charged him six hundred dollars, he still would have come out ahead, right? But there's a there, there's a, there's a thing when the government gets involved that just screws things up, man. And and I want I want you guys to kind of there's an analogy there. So if you and I are trying to come to an agreement on a decision, but then all of a sudden he decides the price of the product that you're going to sell, right? Right. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do I care? Or or what do you care then, right? Psh, somebody else said in the price. Yeah. So whatever you're willing to pay. Whatever you're willing to pay. Now truly so in, in, in healthcare, you've got the insurance companies who are determining who are paying the price that the hospital set. And the hospital knows the insurance company is gonna cover it. They're going to pay it. Finally, they, they've just recently passed a law that hospitals have to show what their prices are for procedures. That's insane to me that we have a whole industry that they're not even showing the prices for what they do. That's What's like it? you going to the mechanic and the mechanic not telling you ever what the cost is to do anything. That's right. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're stupid. If you go to your mechanic... And you don't ask how much it's going to cost before they do the work. Truth. And then all of a sudden, you're the one shot. You ripped I me off. I can't believe it cost Not, you $14,000 for an oil change. <laughs> you didn't ask. You didn't ask. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing, I can't believe we need a law for them to tell them to put their prices up. Pretty sad, isn't it? We need a but, law for that? But. For accountability? Isn't that morality that we're talking about? It's morality. And that's that's where you get into, okay, how much legislation do you have? Because... Government is supposed to be the arm of justice mm. in a market, right? I can't, I can't lie to you or misrepresent myself. And there's good Truth. reason for Truth. that, of right? Of course, man. And and we need to have some Dude. kind of type of recourse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it, we're not arguing for anarcho-capitalism. No, that that idea. Uh, and if you're an anarcho-capitalist, come on down. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> but I know a few. Uh, uh, the, the, and the, I, I think the, the, it's it's like socialism. Kind of good idea. Yeah, it, it sounds good till you really start talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, both ends of the spectrum, the anarcho-capitalists and the socialist communists, forget people are imperfect. People are sinful. I think it's the individualist that understands people are sinful. So it goes, okay, we have to have some type of boundary so it's not anarchy, but we have to be very careful about those boundaries we set so it doesn't become communism. And right, the medical industry, like one of these days we should do an episode on it and, and get into the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, um, sure. But th that industry is so warped right now it's so warped because of government intervention because of the insurance industry because of all of this crap that just comes together and makes this ball of suck right <laughs> let alone the fact let's let's just put put it on the table the american system has produced the vast vast majority, majority of wealth of wealth development technology product product Everybody else is trying to catch up, it's, it, 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 it's specifically in the medical industry. Because we're not stifled by government. Exactly. Well, we weren't anyways. We, we had competition. We had a free market enterprise, right? It's the free market that, that really spurs creation. Because if you're company A and I'm company B, I've got to compete with you. Yeah. The Apple... Apple. The reason Apple was so dang good was because Steve Jobs was uber competitive, and Steve Jobs knew he had to come up with new technologies in order to keep the company going. Yeah, dude. I mean, imagine this: if the federal government starts taking over industry, who needs you, to compete? Well, all, who needs to compete? But then, why do you need copyright and patent laws? Yeah, it's all the governments. Copyright and patent laws were meant to protect individual intellectual property. Even the idea of something, if it's patented, it's your intellectual property. That was the whole purpose of copyrights and patents, for personal and, and for intellectual property. So the federal government, they're destroying their own laws that they're creating. Does, it, does this make sense to anyone? 
it it especially in communism you know it, it, taking the socialism train further into communism right at that point it's whatever rule they want to come up with exactly. whenever they want here's what gk chesterton said he said if a man will not be ruled by god's 10 commandments he will eventually submit to man's 10,000 and that's where we're getting. Here's here's a prime example. Why did the VA need to pass, or why did the federal government need to pass a, a VA Accountability Act to keep the VA accountable? Shouldn't that already happen? If you were ruled by the Ten Commandments morally, you would be accountable to what you're doing? Because yeah. that's your stewardship. That's what you're over. Not that I'm even for federal programs anyways, but th- this is how bad it's gotten. People say, well, to be ruled by a book like the Bible, it's just like book full of rules. Have you read the IRS tax code? <laughs> this is what's happening in socialism, dude. They write all these laws. Like even the, I mean, going back just to, to the recent one, the National Emergency or the National Health Care Act or all these things. How come those things are passed at four in the morning with four, 3,000 pages, 4,000 pages? After 24 hours to read it. To read it. Know? Yeah, you can't even read that stuff. And why why does that have to happen? If it's so right and good, why do you have to do it in the dark of night? Exactly. Come on, man. Like I and people are going to ask, "Well, what do we do about it?" Dude, look. I I'm going to do a live video on this tomorrow. I'm talking about Friday. So this is Thursday night. I'm talking about Friday. Prayer isn't and, and it took me a long time to realize this. I used to get mad. It's like, I'm not just going to pray, man. I got to go do. Dude, I'm really seeing prayer is going to win the day. Not just because it's prayer, but because God will mobilize his people to do what they're called to do. Uh, I sent these guys an example. I don't know if I told you. I was talking about uh, Devoted the other night. I want to go. Oh, you were there. I I, I want to sit outside the Planned Parenthood with the prayer tower. Oh, yeah. The next morning, dude, a friend of mine was in Fort Pierce, Brenda McMenamin. She was on one of our podcasts. She she goes, look at Massey's out here at Fort Pierce in front of an abortion clinic. It was an abortion clinic she took a picture of, and the Massey truck was out there. It was a Massey <laughs> pest control truck. I was like, oh, my gosh, we just talked about this last night. Four hours later, a woman walks in with 40 Days for Life. She said, do you want to go stand outside doing a prayer tent out at the wow. prayer tent? God's going to mobilize his people, man. Yeah. It started with the idea, Lord, I know you put this on my heart. I know I've got to do something locally here against abortion. we got to shut this crap down in Jesus' yeah. name. I'm not mad at the people. They're ignorant. I'm mad at how this became. I'm mad that they don't know who Margaret Sanger is and how she destroyed blacks. And the whole thing, it was about eugenics and creating a a, a race, a good, uh, a, a strong race, all these things, right? This is socialism at its finest, is getting rid of the people you don't want and keeping the ones that eh, you want. Yeah. And that's survival of the fittest evolution crap because it goes back to collective. That's exactly right. Instead the collective, of what's individual. better for the collective? What's better for the collective? Well, better for the collective is getting rid of the ones that are the unwanted. holding everybody back. Yeah, the unwanted. That's that's exactly why Down syndrome babies are being eradicated in some countries. In these countries, especially the Nordic countries. Yeah, they're not needed. They're, they're, they're too they're much of a, a burden. They're a burden on society. And I, I know I've told that story before of the professor talking to the, the you know, like 30-something Down syndrome man and telling him about how he really shouldn't be alive because of the burden that he places and the cost and all of that. Like, that's, that's the insanity that you're looking at. And a lot of people will say, oh, that's, that's extreme. That's not going to happen. Don't... It's always dangerous when you start saying that'll never happen. I think that's where that's you've lost it. Always dangerous. We, we, you know, I'm, I'm a player. I'm a, I play music a lot, tour professionally. I was talking to the worship leader, and I said, if a player thinks he's arrived, he should he's, quit. Yeah, he's he's, he's, he's not nowhere even near. close, man. I don't know a professional player alive right now that doesn't say they need more help or more practice, more things like that. So prayer is going to be the number one. But ask God to show you what you're called to do. Yeah. I don't care if it's preaching. I don't care if it's pastoring. If it's if it's uh, uh, having an apostolic move, having a business, uh, helping out the poor, the sick, the, whatever. Get in your lane and start doing, and ask the Lord for guidance and how to change the society around you. That's gonna. So people are like, "What do I do?" Get it from God first. I yeah. can't tell you what to do. To me, I got to go contact my legislatures. I got to go out and stand and do what I got to do out here with with the Planned Parenthoods. Get involved locally with the with the uh, the mayor and all these things which which we're planning on doing. That is my duty right now. 
have self-evident. So when I go nationally, I teach on the Constitution, constitutional values, constitutional ethics on God and government and all these things. That is my duty. That is what that is my role. And then I pastor the young adults and teach them about the Word of God and how to be men. We talk about this a lot. He's going to get married here, hopefully. Yeah. You know, very, very, very soon. I, I'm hoping. That's what we're... You know, he's got a really cool girlfriend. But it's like, if, if you look at what we're teaching these young adults, women how to be good awesome, strong, independent, godly, submitted women to a godly man who's good. That's what we're teaching right now yeah. because they're at that age right now where they need to learn that stuff. That is my role. I don't know what your role is. I don't know what the answer is for you. Here's what I know. Our role right now is to give you the information so that you can go to God with it and say, Lord, this is truth. What do we do now? Yep. What's my... so? Because if he gives it to you, ain't no devil in hell that'll take it away from you. And to give hope to that, when you pray, when you seek the Lord on it, a lot of people have a passion or something that they're directed towards. And a lot of times you have to just start talking about it. You pray about it and you start talking to others about it, right? And what the Lord's going to do is if that's your, that's your lane, the Lord's going to start opening doors. So maybe you get another person next to you who's like, I, I totally feel the same way about this. We, we got to do something. We got to do something. Well, let's start praying about this. Then all of a sudden, look, you, you meet a businessman who he's, he's got some money to finance the project. And you guys get together and he goes, you know what? That's really on my heart too. I, I think we need to do this. So the Lord's going to grow it and the Lord's going to put it into place. And you have to have faith to walk that through that, okay, God's going to open this up. God's going to give me the opportunities that I need. It's very um, it's very overwhelming to think, I want to eradicate cancer in this area. Right. That's overwhelming. And a person looks at it, I could never do that. So government can do that because government's got a lot of power and control. Money. They've got money. So I'm going to vote for the programs that'll take care of cancer. It's much more humbling to get on your knees before the Lord and say, Lord, I have no money. I have no influence. I have no strength or power, but this is on my heart. Look at what Peter. How do I, how do I eradicate this? Look, look, look at Peter when he was outside the, the gate called Beautiful in Acts. And Peter says to the man who was lame, he said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. Rise up and walk. And immediately, can you step out in faith that way? If you have a heart for cancer, I don't know what to do. Start asking the Lord for why you have a burden for it in the first place. Like, what if you're supposed to have that healing gift and that healing power to do that? And guys, I don't care if you think that's weird, dude. I've seen people heal of cancer. Yeah. I've prayed for people that have been healed of cancer. Yes, healed of cancer. No, I'm not lying. Yes, I'll go to my grave with it. I've seen, I've been healed from seizures, bro. I never had a seizure after I got prayed for. I had epilepsy really bad. God's a healer. He's real. And you know what, dude? I believe in inner healing. God healed me from disappointments and fears and failures, and I'm still going through this process. God is healer, man. He's all of that stuff. Here's the thing, though. I don't worship the gift, man. I worship the giver of that gift. I don't put emphasis on the gifts. I worship him first. And then as my heart is submitted to him, he gives me those gifts so I don't ruin that gift. So I don't take it on no. myself in pride saying, look what I did. It's, well, look what Jesus did, man. Jesus died for me. I didn't die for you. I got nothing to do with it. I just get out of the way and let him move. We get out of the way here and do these shows so that we can show you the better way, so we can show you Christ and all this. No. Look, man, all we're ever talking about here is for you to have individual freedom. And people get mad about that because it's going to cost them something. That's, the, that's why they get mad. Yep. It's not, it's not, it has nothing to do. We're telling you to get out of bondage into light and freedom and liberty. And you know what that's going to do? Creating you an individual responsibility, which a lot of us don't want. Because we're scary. very comfortable in where we're going in our lives. That's okay. But what nation are you leaving to your kids? That's it. I want you to prosper. Yes, I want you to have your business, your million dollar business. Yes, I want you to have your boats and all these things. Man, fantastic. I may never have those things, but I'm not envious of you. But I want to correct this nation so that you can continue to have those things and leave them to your children and to have a business for them and to have them prosper. That's all we're talking about. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with us trying to uphold liberty and freedom? And you know what? It, it's going to cost you. That's all. The gospel, it costs me. 
It costs me life. It costs me my desires. I don't, I don't have, I don't want ungodly desires. I want his desire for the people. Okay. That's it. You know why? Because he gave me his best desire was a son. God gave me his son, man. Now I'm called a friend of Jesus. I'm called a friend of Jesus, man. And now I'm God's son. And he's my father. And I get to go to my father and tell him, man, I want to help fix this country, Lord. Yeah, it's far gone, some say. So what? Oh, man, what a thing to pray into. It's too far gone, is it? So is a man terminally ill of cancer. And God will still heal him and redeem him. Man, I believe in that God, dude. I really, really do. Even if I never see it, I hope my kids taste that, man. I really do. And that's the hope we're trying to give. That's it. That's the whole purpose of self-evident. That's the whole purpose of the devoted. That's the whole purpose of Revive Church. The whole purpose of any church, for that matter. To set you free from bondage. So you can walk in liberty and freedom and the gifts that God's called you to walk in. That's all. I don't want anything from you. I know if you want to support, praise God, but I don't want anything from me. I'm not going to tell you not to listen because you don't. I'm not going to stop doing this because you don't. If you want, if you're getting fed from this, praise God, support us, bring some donations our way. We could use them, but that doesn't have any bearing on why we do this. We started with nothing, right? We started this yeah. with nothing. Still, pretty still much have nothing, nothing. <laughs> right? right? Still have nothing. But you know what? We're it doesn't matter. There. We're seeing changed lives. Can I tell you something? Before, before we leave, because I really want to pray for President Trump, too. I said we were going to do that last podcast, and I, forgive me that I didn't. Um, and not just President Trump, but Congress and Senate in, in America. Um, my wife went to England on a mission trip in the 90s, late 90s. I think early 2000s, late 90s. <clears throat> she met a girl that was, I guess, pretty influential to Carrie. I hope I'm getting the story right, because I'm terrible at stories. I don't remember any details, because I'm a guy. And um, it's a joke. Um, so... This girl moved to the States. She became liberal. I mean, I think believes God, but like kind of has this liberal view of, of God yeah. and what he accepts and tolerates and things. And Carrie was like, you know, I, I, I think she unfriended her or something like that. Eventually got back on the friends list. Yeah. She told Carrie, I've been listening to your podcast. And she said, we may not agree philosophically, politically. Other things. She said, but the way you guys deliver truth, it's non-condemning. But you bring so much very good, well thought out information. Wow. These Amen. points that come out, it's like, it made me think. I don't want to be a closed off person. I want to learn from other people to get why they're saying what they're saying. And she goes, the, the girl said, you may not think you're having an impact out there, but you impacted this one. Wow. Amen. Right? I'm in my room like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay I'm, not, I'm not crying. You know, like that, that means more to me. I don't, again, they don't give a dime. I don't care, but we're helping that one. And, and the thing is like, I'm, I'm not here to force you to agree with me. Yeah. And, dude. and I, I, I love that she specified, I, you put your points forward in a non-condemning way. That's the, that's amen, the goal. Thank you. Because that's, that's the, goal. the complete goal is to provide our point of view, our information. Not calling you stupid not, or no. idiotic. Like, or... I want to delve into why people think the way they do. I really want to get there. Of why do you think this way? Why, why is this important to you? And then I want to bridge that gap and say, okay, I can see why that's important to you. I also see that as yeah. important. So here's, here's how we can be consistent on that. So, amen. That's awesome. You know, there's a story of, and I'm kind of in like storytelling mode. I think I'm turning into a dad. Where it's there, turning into, right? I am a dad. <laughs> there was this young man who was walking on the beach, and for some reason, all these starfish got washed up onto shore from the ocean. Mm. And he started grabbing one, threw him back in the sea. Grabbed another one, threw him back. His friend that was with him said, "You can't possibly help all these. Why are you even wasting your time?" He said, "Nope, but it helped that one. But it helped that one. Yep. But it helped that one." That's exactly right. But it helped that one. If if if, we, if you haven't watched that movie Hacksaw Ridge, remember oh, when he saved those seventy five people? He's like, just, just one, one more. more. I mean, dude, more. if that doesn't move you, if you save one soul in your life, you have done the will of God. The Bible says, "He that winneth souls is wise," not he that has a business, yeah. not he that has the money or the giftings. He that wins souls. That's what this is about. And, and some reap, 
It's some so. Dude, that's what I'm talking and about. They, they they all rejoice together. Yeah. It's biblical. So if you're all going to have your lane, just like you were saying, you're all going to have your lane. And guys, if you're worried, I'm not an evangelist going out saving tons of souls. Okay, that's okay. Are you sowing? Are you following God? Are you living your life to show Christ? Are you taking advantage of the opportunities that he gives you, that the Spirit tells you, take advantage of this? Then you're sowing. You're sowing. You may never see the seed grow into a plant, but gosh darn it, you were there and faithful. Yep, and that's, that's not your job anyway. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict them. You know, it's, it's, yep. it's the Spirit of God's job to get them to come to the foot of the cross. You lead them, though. You teach them. You show them. Sow the seed, right? I thank God for my mom and dad for sowing those seeds of righteousness in me. I thank God uh, for that 22-year-old punk kid, Jake, who preached to me once and I got saved. I thank yeah. God for guys like Joe Zupitz who planted these un- amazing thoughts in my head, about in my heart, about you're, you're God's warrior. You're God's man. You're not forsaken. You know what I mean? God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it, bro. And I was like at a moment, a point in my life where it's like, screw God. Yeah. And he showed th- those were seeds, and I'm seeing it affirmed over and over and over. And it, thank God for that millionaire that used to sit with me, man, before he passed away, and would tell me, "You're going to change the world, kid." Thank God for those people, like those young people, the young adults that they'll text me from time to time and say, "I just want you to know how much you're impacting my life." I had a, one of the young adults. We went out to Chick Fil A the other night uh, on Tuesday. You know what he said to me? He said, "You don't give yourself enough credit. You're changing this kid's life." I didn't ask for that. He just said it. But you know what? He's changing mine. No. He's changing mine. He's teaching me how to love him better. So as much as I, they're learning from me, I'm learning from them. As much as I try to teach him in, in Mary, I'm learning from him. He's so quiet. He doesn't get upset. He doesn't get ruffled, it seems like. He's just very me- meek and, and, and demeanor. I want to learn that, man. You know what I mean? I want to learn and have that, that possession of, of, of my, my emotions in check and all these things. And yeah, the difference between passion and emotion, I get passion. I can't help that. It just comes out. You know what I mean? And I don't try to do that very often, but... There's times, man, especially when I preach, you can just see it. It just pops out. I don't mean to. It's not something I conjure up. I don't try to think about it. Yeah. Um, you, very calm in demeanor. I learn a lot from you guys, but we're learning from each other. Absolutely. And, dude, if we can just unite with each other to go win the lost, we wouldn't see half the divisions we see. We wouldn't see socialism in America. We would see God's kingdom on earth the way he told his disciples to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be none on earth as it is in heaven. That's all I'm saying. And that's why I think it's so important to talk about socialism. It's important. And we want to talk about that more, but we're going to talk about God willing judicial activism next week. Yeah. Uh, and, and let's talk about the Bill of Rights. I really want to do live videos on that and kind of teach on these things and what the federal government's authority was and what isn't, you know? So, um, but right now, I, I just, I really felt last week to really pray and forgive me for not doing it. I'm sure everybody was like, wait, where's the prayer? Um, but, you know, President Trump deserves. We're supposed to pray for all those in authority. We're supposed to pray for those uh, uh, kings and, and mm-hmm. those kind of people. And he's not a king, but you know what? He's been elected president. Just like we prayed for Obama, just like we, pr- I'm sorry, President Obama, just like we prayed for President Bush and President Clinton and all these things. We should be praying for this man, right? That he would get it right from God, you know, and he would have the godly people around yeah. him to, to keep him accountable and keep him constitutional, all these things. And so I want to pray for that, but also the state of the nation, Guys, look, y'all can call me nuts. <laughs> we're we're winning. I don't care what anybody says, man. I got to believe that. I got to believe that we're just seeing a bunch of lies being being thrown at us right now. It's yeah. just it becomes redundant too because it's the same lie. And 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 anyways, we're we're going to pray real fast and uh thank you for tuning into this, man, because you guys are really the difference makers for us. I, I yeah, I'm not trying to speak for you, but I think um hearing responses like that it, he, you know, it keeps us going. It really does, it man. It keeps us going. Uh, Jay, man, part of the Young Adults, he said they've been watching. They watched the one with K. Carl Smith. Yeah. His family, his entire family's black, and he, you know, they they got something out of it. It's like, dude, to have a whole family watch this podcast and say, it's, "That's the kid. That's the yeah, yeah, that's us." You know, it, it's such an it's moving. honor. It, it is. It's dude. such an honor when somebody comes up and says, I, "I've been watching the podcast." I was saying this to Melissa tonight. It's like. When they say, I've been listening or I've been watching, that means you got through more than one, which to me, that's like, wow. You, <laughs> I, you listen we, to our babblings? We said something Holy crap. of value enough that you yeah. hung on for at least two. That's huge. That's like, huge, man. So like, 
guys, it, it's such an honor to hear that stuff and to know that we've got some type of effect for you, some type of yeah. value that we can put something there that you can take away and use. Yep. Um, so the fact is we love you guys so much and please let us know like what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear, like how it's affected you. You want to be on the podcast. Yeah. Heck, come on, let us know. Uh, so Cause there's a lot of people we need to interview, dude. We absolutely, need to we got to get John Stenberger down. We got to get Bill Federer down. I to, to interview. just brought up Bill tonight. I know we got, we got to yeah. really, anyways, um, pray for us guys. The next few weeks are going to be super busy. I got to go to a convention and preach. Um, John Stenberger from, uh, Florida family action, uh, council. I said it wrong. We'll put the website down on the link. Yeah. Um, they invited us to Tallahassee to go be a part of the, the pro-life, uh, movement stuff up there to abolish abortion. That's kind of the goal. And, uh, you know, just there's a lot of things going on with self-evident. We're doing those classes in the public schools with the mm-hmm. Latin family yeah. and all these things. It's coming up, man. We're doing a lot this month, plus past. You know, there's a lot with you, too. You know, we're, look, guys, we really need your support because I really want Mike to focus solely on this deal. You know, we really want him to really focus and hone in his skill set on what the podcast is, the content. And uh, we're really we're, we're believing big this year, man. We are believing big. And I don't know how it looks. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, but I believe God for bigger. I don't think money's an issue to him. Uh, I believe it takes more to, to to have faith to believe someone to be healed than money because money's yeah. just a transaction. Uh, but we're believing big. So I just want to pray us out real fast. And, and I don't want to say real fast, but we'll just go with the spirit. And um, we love all of you. And I, we, we mean that from the bottom of my heart. So, Father, I, I so thank you, God, for your blessing and your anointing to even do this. Lord, to go back to the foundations of what you established here. Father, was it perfect? Nope. It was built by man. It wasn't going to be. But they built it to be perfected over time. Lord, every charter saying that they wanted to advance the gospel from the early 1600s to now, from when uh, Christopher Columbus, his profession was to advance the gospel. Lord, uh, Connecticut's first constitution being built on a sermon from a, a reverend. Lord, all these things was built on a godly foundation. Then to our founders who said God created us equal with rights. Lord, I thank you, God, for returning to those foundations. In Jesus' name, Lord, but it takes a nation to believe that. I'm not saying it takes a majority. It takes a nation to believe that. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the heart of this country. Lord, you said blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that it's the nation that needs to turn, not a government. Lord, I thank you that this nation would take its rightful calling, Lord, and all those who are in deep and dark in oppression, Lord, that you would call them as pastors and apostles and evangelists, Father, and those who give hope, encouragers, and those kind of things, Father. Those that are in deep in depression, I thank you for the pastor's heart, Father. Lord, those who say they can't see, Father, I thank you for the prophetic gifting to open up. Father, those who say they have no vision, Father, I thank you for the apostolic gifting in them. Father, those who say, ah, I'm, just too, I'm just too shy, I thank you for the evangelistic gift in them, Father. I thank you, Lord, for what you're establishing in President Trump. And Father God, those who are around him, Father, his base, Lord, he's not a king. But Father God, I thank you, Lord, for turning his heart into righteousness all the time, Lord. That Father, from his own mouth, he would say, I want to obey that document that our founders wrote. I want to go back to giving the people the power. I want to go back to us representing the people. I want to go back to that law that came from God the way William Blackstone said, Father. I thank you, Lord, for those words in his heart, Father God, and those uh, that, that fire from heaven that would fall on him to convict him, Father God, of what he does wrong, Father, but in love. And Lord, to praise what he does right. In Jesus' name, Lord, I also thank you for Congress and Senate, Lord. I thank you for those voices, Father God, that willfully know that they are against you, that willfully try to use scripture against the people of God. Lord, I thank you, you shut their mouths, Father, in grace, Father. For the loving kindness that you had towards me, you had to shut my mouth too, Lord, and you brought me to you. I thank you, God, that you would haunt them, Father God, and convict them, I should say, in their sleep, Father God, that you would wake them up with dreams, Lord, knowing, Father God, that Saul was Saul before he became Paul. Lord, I thank you for those anointings, and I thank you for those answers to prayer. In Jesus' name, Father God, all those. And those, Father, who claim righteousness, Father, but sit on the sidelines, I thank you fill them with the, with the, the courage of the Holy Spirit, Father, a backbone 
of steel, God, from heaven. In Jesus' name, Lord, you would activate their Christianity, God. Not just let them sit the sidelines, Lord, but I thank you, Lord, for an open door to them. And Father, again, that they would have the heart of we represent the people. We represent their interests according to the laws of the Constitution. And I thank you, God, that they would go back to the foundations, Lord of the law in Jesus name, Lord. I even pray for the Supreme Court now. God, I thank you for the next Supreme Court justice. If Ruth, if Miss Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, I thank you, God, that there's an elected person who knows the constitution and will not waver. Not one who knows case law, but one that understands the law of God, or one who understands the law of the land, one who understands Father God, where his authority or her authority lies. Lord, I thank you for the men and women in this country that are willing to stand up and take the fight to the streets. Those that are willing to stand up and take the fight against diseases and sickness, Lord, that you would strengthen them, Father, and that this body politic, Father, and the body of Christ, Lord, could come together and say, Lord, we will not tolerate sin anymore, that abortion would be destroyed by the living God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we are calling for the ending and abolishment of abortion, the abolishment of death, God, because you you are righteous in that, and you call it uh, an abomination, Lord, the hands that shed innocent blood. You even said, Father, you went far. You said even those who hate in their heart, they commit murder, God. I thank you, Lord. You removed that murderous spirit from this country, God. Lord, is that a big prayer? You stinking a right it is, but Lord, if I didn't pray it, I wouldn't believe it. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name, that you would cause us to believe what we're praying. Lord, I'm also thankful, God, for this team, the assembled unit, Father, all these ministries that are preaching truth and righteousness, God. And I thank you, God, that they, they would continue to stand in the gap, Lord, because you put it in their heart to. Lord, it's nothing new. Other men have stood in the past, and we've seen them move. I thank you, Lord, that you put that same self-spirit in us, in Jesus' name, by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, again, for loving us. Can I be selfish for a minute, Lord? Thank you for loving me. Thank you for calling and ordaining me. And all you want is a connection with me. That's all you want. But, Lord, you also put a mandate on my heart. You put a burden on my heart for the nation. You put a burden on my heart for the law. You put a burden on my heart to help pastor. You put a burden on my heart to have a family, Lord. And I thank you for the balance in those things and what you want us to do for Mike. Father God, as he's balancing work and a and, and a career and, and the podcast and the family and his house. And Father, I thank you for a balance there in Jesus' name. For Jonathan, Lord, and his future endeavors. Father, I thank you for your prospering hand on him. God, you're directing him as an apostle, like just the anointing that he has. I thank you, God, for his business and all these things that he's he's got himself involved in and his, and his family, Lord, his future family and all these things. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you would bless the work of our hands, God. Not because of who we are. Shoot, man, we don't deserve a thing. But Lord, because you called us to be worthy in Jesus' name because of you and your worthiness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Love you guys.